We interrupt your regularly scheduled program to bring you another episode of We Can Help with Dave and Woody, already in progress. No. <laughs> no, it sucks. I spilled it on myself. <laughs> and on the pre- dog. A little, little yeah. premature uh, beer can opening. Yeah. Oh, uh, Sorry, are we recording now? I think we are. <laughs> okay, we're back. Next? We're back. I'm really liking this background. What you- I know. It's uh, very uh, festive of you, Dave. Happy uh, happy July 3rd. Yeah. So and if you're not aware of what's going on tomorrow, then uh, obviously if you li- you spent too much time under a rock. Well, Dave, yeah. our listeners could be in other countries. We don't care about those people. Yes, we do. We're Americans, you know. Unless it's your well, daughter, in, unless it's your daughter in London. Right, right. Before I before I forget, uh, that that's why we use a bow knot for our shoes instead of any other knot. Yeah, I was aware of that. I remember that. You do. Yeah, from Makes first sense. grade or something. No, I think my father pulled me aside and said, "Dave, I got to talk to you about a couple of things about the bow knot and, and we're going to talk about the knots first. Well, I I don't want to st- I don't want to steal your bit, but. Uh, since it is technically, well, it's a weekend night for me because my company was gracious enough to give us Friday off as well. They came out last week and said, hey, you know what? You guys are doing a great job. Take Friday off. Make it a four-day weekend. So Does that, does that comply with the, uh, what's that letter that the federal government says companies have to give now? Ooh, look at that poor. Oh, if you're not watching this on YouTube, you're missing out, folks. I want to nice. miss. That's a little, it's a little. Yeah, it's getting a little heady, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm it's, having a uh, Appalachian Mountain Brewery Longleaf IPA. And the locals call it Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I say that again. Give a nice plug for the. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, hey, glad to have you as a sponsor. I talk you up all day. Um, basically, free samples would, would get me there. Appalachian Mountain Brewery. Longleaf IPA. Well, Longleaf is that Longleaf Pine? I'm assuming. There we go. Oh, that's not bad. I like that. Got to get next to my head for it to show up. So IPA. That IPA. That sounds for for Indian Pale Ale. How did the Indian Pale Ale get construed with American brews? Uh, I told you the story last week, and you said, "Oh, it's boring. Don't share it." It was easier to make. It's an easier beer to make. I know, but is it Indian as in? I believe so. The Raj, all that stuff when they were yeah. over in it, when they, the, the British, you know, yeah. ruled India, all that okay. kind of stuff. Uh, that it, like fun. Maybe I'm speaking out this side of my backside, but okay, that's how I understand. And it's very tasty. I've had one already. So you're, uh, are you in the bag or in the can? So you're off tomorrow and Friday. Yes, and Saturday and Sunday. Oh, let the party begin, my friend. Exactly. I'm thinking about going off my plan and getting a few. I got a couple more of those killer whales left. Really? You're going to look like a killer whale. Oh. (laughs) You want to see my blowhole? All right. (laughs) All right. Well, I don't know what to cover first. We got some listener engagement. I think. Yeah. And we have uh, to celebrate a where we had a, a one-on-one meeting with a listener. That's and incredible. You met a, a super fan of ours. Yeah, super fan, super fan Chris. Right. And that's something that we're going to put out there. I think that anytime that someone initiates that they're a listener, that doesn't matter where you are, we'll travel right. and, go and shake hands and a firm embrace is what I I said. mean, I went to Boston to meet a few fans of the show. Yeah. Yeah. You look traveled, confused, but come on. Now. I traveled to Orlando. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about some of that in a second to meet up with Chris. And it was not easy because of what we were doing. But You uh, want to walk us through the, this, this event? Yeah, I guess so. I've kind of teased it. So this week was my Future Business Leaders of America, FBLA National Leadership Conference. Dun, dun, dun. And I was thinking it was close to 15,000 kids. There were 18,000 people in the orange county convention civic centers whatever they call it including the chaperones now all in all in, inclusive okay. that's still uh, a lot of people the orange county sheriff department the uh, paramedics everybody <laughs> no so chaperones advisors and students Eighteen thousand is what they said 
it was cr- cray cray as the kids say and that would um, probably filled up a tenth of that uh convention center correct well we were in one of the one of the big halls it was kind of an interesting story i'm going to go too far into history of this but we were in one of the halls that i used to work in for a trade show that i did years ago oh, and right. it's massive but um these kids were everywhere and so the cool thing is as you can imagine national leadership conference there's 50 states in a couple territories, I don't know why we have chapters in China, though. We have the future business leaders of America. <laughs> Maybe they're trying to tell us something. Well, and we have a Chinese chapter. I don't, I don't know if I like that or not, but well, that's another discussion. If I that's get how the they're going to infiltrate us, Dave, through the FBLA. Well, I, <laughs> don't get me started. Stop. I got plenty of stuff to talk about on the trip before that. Well, let me let me help you out with the size of this place too. I I once uh, in you know my future life I w- I worked in concerts and I I worked a Melissa Etheridge concert and she was too uh, elite to go outside and get in her uh, limo, so she had her tour bus pull inside the um, the convention center. And pull up to her dressing room. That's how big this place is. A full-scale bus pulled what, in. What year was that? That would have been 19, early early 80s. First half of the... No, no I'm sorry. Second half of the 80s. Second half of the 80s. I think I was Probably. there. You went to Melissa. You would have known me by then? Yes. Well, so she did a... Um... A radio yeah, it was, it was like Q96 a show. Okay, so I probably saw you there then. I don't remember. That. I was working backstage. They did Etheridge that way, and they did Cheap Trick that way. Okay, you- he wasn't there. Cheap Trick was our big act was Melissa Etheridge, so it might have been another show. And it was like an acoustic set she did. Okay, could have been. I don't know. Yeah, these things that I can remember. I can't remember my wife's cell number, but I can remember these. <laughs> Why anyway, should you? So it's a big place. That's, yes. that's a that's a forgotten. And it's grown. Conclusion. Oh, it's massive. Yeah, five times since then. Well, we had probably the one big suite area where they had the massive testing going on and the downstairs for our conference, you know, the big show. And then we had to walk adjacent to it. To, I, I think we were in the entire West end of the conference center. It was massive. It was huge. I, I think I did 8,000 steps a day. Wow. Which is. You good. didn't get to 10, huh? Uh, I, I tried. But anyway, so Chris was staying down the street at the Hilton Orlando Okay. And I was at the uh, Hyatt Regency Orlando, formerly the Peabody. And the cool thing about my hotel was it, it was literally I could walk right out the front door and go up over this, you know, what do you call it, flyover things. And I was in the convention center. And, and he they had shuttles back and forth from where he was. So once you passed off his number to me, I reached out to him. And, and you know, to his credit and mine, we're, we have a responsibility to our kids. So we just can't leave and take off and do stuff. And so, well, you could, but it'd be frowned upon. Man, yeah, we wouldn't, because we're professionals, Woody. I can speak (laughs) for Chris. He's a he's a professional, consummate professional. And um, so we agreed that we would try to figure out a way to do it. And then finally, it came down to the last night where all of us are back for the finals, and these eighteen thousand kids are in there. And I said, "Are you in here?" And I'm texting him. He goes, "Yeah, I'm I'm here." And, And so I said, well, listen, I'm at the Florida stage, which was up right at the front of the stage because we were the host uh, state. Oh. Okay. And I said, I'm going to walk toward North Carolina. And um, I went on a journey. And I'm standing right next to the, to the North Carolina flag. And I'm texting him, okay, I'm standing right at the flag. And as I turn to the left, he's like, Dave, how are you doing? <laughs> so he was sitting right there. So we pulled up and walked over to the side of the, to get out of the crowd, so to speak. Yeah. I don't know. We talked for 15, 20 minutes probably. Who would you get to take the picture, oh, which so, I'll put on the screen? Because I knew it wasn't a selfie. It was far enough so, away. So this kid, I said, just when we were getting ready to shake hands and say goodbye, I said, hey, wait a minute, Chris, we got to get a picture. And so then I'm faced with who's, because I can't do a selfie, and I, how do I right. do that? So some poor girl, none of it, no, he didn't know her, I didn't know her. She's getting up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, hey, get over here and take a picture of us. And she's like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> So she snaps a picture of us. I said, thank you, darling. You know, thanks for help. Right. Um, so no, nah, then was, she probably reported you too on the way. Hey, there's two weird guys. That's 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 Scram, beat it. She's going to call the cops. <laughs> um, no, we committed to, I don't know. Chris is going to follow through. I hope he does, but we committed to, to link up with LinkedIn and each other. And he's got my contact information. Of course. And, and, and we he shared, knows you have mutual friends. 
So. Yeah, and we shared kind of professional anecdotes uh, about the work that we do with school and and maybe how we can trade ideas for FBLA future engagement. So, you know, the only time we would see each other is on another national adventure. And the next one, Woody, oh. is is going to be Anaheim, California. Oh, wow. You know That's... any friends out there? <laughs> uh, I used to have family near there, but they, they all moved away. So, uh, no, not anymore. Anaheim is not a great place. <laughs> no, no, not Anaheim. Van Nuys. Oh, that's even no, worse. No, Are you? No way. No it way. is Anaheim. Van Nuys okay. is like the, isn't Anaheim, isn't Van Nuys like the porn capital? Yeah, it gets really bad in Van Nuys. Yeah, no, it is Anaheim because the kids were talking about going to Disney World. Or Disney yes, World. that's where Disney, Disneyland is. And that's where, so you're probably on in and around that property, I guess. And of course, the Angels still play there. Well, at this I, time of year, so I'm not really excited about going to California. But I told one of my kids said, "What if it's in California? Will you go?" And I said, "Well, I gotta get I gotta get a kid to get us there first. I'm not gonna just arbitrarily go." And then you gotta siphon some money out of people to pay for you to get there. It's a little bit more because you can't just take that. the school van and uh, cruise. No, on to California. but I think my school will pay for an advisor and one kid's flight. Okay. Because they've shipped other people around. Because I believe Chris flew down. I don't know if he fundraised or how he how he managed that. He might just pay. Well, for I don't want to put words in his mouth, case he's listening. I I know what he told me, so I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna keep that under wraps. Yeah, no um, problem. So yeah, he sold so, drugs. Hey, come on, we know he sold drugs to go. Is no, what you're I just saying. don't want to. I don't want to throw <laughs> the, dist- the district under the bus. <laughs> I'm um, kidding. Yeah, kidding no, case. no drugs. There was no drugs. Shh. Anyway, so what a super nice guy. Thanks, Woody, for the connection and sure. that we get a chance to meet one, not only one of our a fellow FBLA person, but a, really a most important, a super fan. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. I let apparently, him know. Uh, apparently, he's yeah. been to the lake house. Yes, yes, he has. I, I have not. So <laughs> you're welcome anytime, Dave, as long as I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> Just there's a key under the mat, man. <laughs> sure, it'll work. They said this is not your house, Woody. I don't know what the (laughs) The people inside. Yes. Let's not kick that dead horse. But Chris, if you're listening, great meeting you and uh, enjoyed it. And we'll look forward to staying connected. Keep listening and don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. And tell somebody about us. You know, yeah. If you you got students, that'd be appropriate. Tell all your students to sign up. Exactly. What what are you trying to get me to do with my kids? I'm not doing it. So anyway, you don't really want them listening to you. No, we don't. Um, I can't even read my own notes here tonight. Let's see. Well, I okay. do have some more FBLA stuff. I, I guess I want to save the angry. I got a couple angry. Oh, no. Yeah. But it's fun. I think you'll find it entertaining. But it... Well, most of the time I do, Dave. So I don't think it'll be let down. I, uh, I, I'm also. Well, I, I have some questions for you. So uh, as you know, I went to the lake in Tennessee this past weekend because you were texting me asking me for contact information while I'm driving through the mountains in North Carolina and I'm swerving trying to text Dave back because I know he's impatient and uh, so I got him the information back. I always know because I'm very short when I'm driving and I always assume I, I don't, you don't know that and you're like damn it <laughs> he's obviously being short with me you know you know, uh, is he just, just an a-hole I'm like no I'm driving I can't you know be elaborate while I'm driving but uh, you know well, how people yeah, no, no way I'm doing that. Um, you know, people put bumper stickers. I'm, I'm not a big fan of bumper stickers, right? But I right. get it. You know, my kid's uh, an A student at whatever. Yeah, you want to brag about your kids, or I love New York, or uh, you know, the, nowadays we like to put acronyms in ovals on the car and i'm i'm supposed to decipher where what this location is i'm sure you have it down there i'm sure what's uh oh like a like a national JS, park or yeah something. no or like jsb jack jacksonville beach or something like that yeah. your jd okay. yeah and i'm supposed to know what that is right on the back of your car but the one that threw me off was uh someone had and i see this a lot is yeti which not the uh, long lost uh, mythical man oh, of the mountains. The but cooler, the, yeah. I'm like, well, what are you? Why is that? On? You're not? Are you bragging that you yeah. have enough money to waste on a cooler? I think is so. That, is it what it's for? 
Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, uh, and I hope I'm not outputting it, uh, off putting anybody that's a listener, but take it off your car. We don't care. I, I think it's a way of saying, you know, look at me. I got a Yeti. <laughs> I, 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 I overpaid $300. Yeah. For- I mean, how? So I asked this guy one time, I said, so, I mean, you know, how, how long is long enough for your ice not to melt? <laughs> I mean, a week? <laughs> Two weeks? Well, the power's out, Dave. You got you to gotta make up for I mean, it. come on. Uh, the igloo that we used to sit on in the camper between <laughs> the, mom styrofoam, and dad. the styrofoam one. Yeah. I mean, so I get it. it they're they're cool, no pun intended. And that's cool and all, but I mean, how how long is it how long is it enough? It, it, and it is impressive, but at the same time, I, I don't need to the cooler I forget's in the garage like a week later, I open up and go, Holy cow, there's still ice. <laughs> it's like I don't need that. You know? Yeah, I, you know. But there's a there's this thing called risk and reward, you know, trade right. off. I don't know. So so you're kind of it sounds like you're in my camp. I mean, when is enough? Yeah, I or and then top of it, why do I need to advertise that I bought one of these? So so the new thing with the kids is the is the cup the um, Yeti cup. Well, it's not Yeti. Is Yeti's passe in this? It's uh, oh, I know what Stanley. you're talking about. What is it? Stanley. The yes, new Stanley cups, and they're like oh my. I think two, well, they're two hundred dollars. Alexa, how much is a Stanley thermal cup? Your Amazon account is linked to Amazon US, where <laughs> you can shop in US English or US Spanish only. Please select a supported language on your Alexa. Okay. Alexa, order no, a no, Stanley. No, 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 Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa, volume ten. No, she's going to start sending me Stanleys here, and I don't want that. Um, <laughs> and they're not cheap. They're like two hundred dollars, I think. Yeah. So these kids are showing up at school with them before school. I can't wait to get my Stanley. And I asked them the same question. I said, "So, how long is long enough? You know, how long can?" Well, if you drink it within three hours, that's long enough. It's a status symbol. I I get that and everything, but do you have to drive around and put it on the back of your car? I mean, that's like putting. uh, 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 Now I can't think. Yeah. YSL on the back of your car. Eve Saint Laurent. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, why do people do you drive a BMW? No, but every car has the manufacturer name. Even a Yugo has a Yugo symbol on it. You know, oh, you can't no. you can't get away from that. Those rivets wouldn't stay on, probably. <laughs> I do I do remember as a kid, uh my father uh it, it was during the gas crunch, so take that into consideration. He bought a pinto. Because he had a long way to drive to work. And he told explicitly told the dealership no decals on the car. He went to pick it up and they had two of them on the car. He was living. He was so pissed. Like this like this sucker bought a pinto or what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> stay, stay ten feet back, it may explode. Did he get know. the hatchback one with the screws in the gas tank? That's no. The no, they all did that. We they had a had. station wagon. We no the the only one that blew up was the hatchback. No, they all did. My father's got recalled. Well, what's what do you? It, I mean, it had a trunk in the back. It wasn't a hatch. What so I they, the they window a, didn't open. They made a wagon, a station wagon. I remember that. And my brother, that was his first car. He went to the Ford dealership, oh, bought yeah. a seventy-two Pinto. We drove that sucker forever, man. Seventy-two well, or seventy-four. I can't remember. That how. was handed down. Uh, so my mother, when my parents divorced, my father left that with us. Oh, um, party yeah, gift because we had a set. The other car was a '72 Impala, uh, and it it was starting to to age. So we drove that Pinto to Florida, uh, towing a trailer, and we Behind drove that yeah the with the Pinto at four wow. speed, four and a floor Pinto, and it got so bad that the uh, rust holes were in the floorboards and I was just learning to drive. So I started driving around and if you hit a puddle, it was perfect. It would come right up through the floorboard and hit you between the eyes. The (laughs) water would, it was hilarious. We sold that thing for like $200 at some point. Yeah. I think my brother Frank's was, um, we drove it to Colorado. Yeah. That's why I lived in car. I drove that thing around in the snow. Probably the sturdiest Ford ever made. Well, it was so light. It never wore out tires. You couldn't burn up tires on it. It, <laughs> it had hardly any weight to it. Yeah. And then, and then it come to find out it had a cracked exhaust manifold on it. 
Oh. And we we were burning up batteries because the heat was exchanging. Oh, with the battery. Okay. Yeah. I thought you but, meant you guys were losing your minds, inhaling all the fumes. No, no. It was it was so hot under the the you know the hood that yeah was melting the batteries. But anyway, hmm. all right. Well, fun story. So yeah. um, I don't know the Yeti. I think it's the status symbol. Of course it is. I just do. I need it. No. Yeah, I, you know, there's a comedian that does the bit about the, you know, telling all the kids in your family and the, I don't know, it's whatever people get. Oh, it. the great joke, Dave. Yeah, I, it started off with nothing and ended with less. <laughs> even with even less. <laughs> Is that possible? How can you start a joke off and it ends with less than you started with? But anyway. But great. Yeah. All right, great show. We'll see yeah. you later. <laughs> Happy yeah. July 4th. Um. Well, we did have some listener email engagement. Mm, that is our... big, big week, big week for the show. Big, yeah, big week. This is uh, <laughs> it doesn't get much bigger than this. <laughs> exactly. Nation's independence, and people are listening to the show. That's how it works. You know, I, I, I we can't. I don't know if we can. There's no subscription to uh, if you're listening to it on Spotify or anything. So we no, don't. There really... is. There is two dollars a month. Oh, no, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't asking people to do that. Okay, I meant I got to take that down then. Oh, no, no, no. I thought you meant something else. No, no, no. Keep that up. Keep that up. Uh, So we really don't know how many people are listeners. We just see how many times ads have played is all we can see. But on YouTube, there's the subscribers. And I go, you know, I watch YouTube at lunchtime every day. That's kind of how I eat my my lunch at work. I just find things on YouTube I want to watch. And I'm always amazed that the smallest of channels will have like a hundred thousand subscribers. And then I pop over to the Dave and Woody, we can help. You know what number I'm seeing? 24. How many? 24. Oh, we're holding strong at 24. <laughs> it's pretty late. In fact, um, I wrote this down for last week. So one of the shows I watch is, um, Something about morning. I don't know. With Rhett and Link. Uh, good mythical morning with Rhett and Link. One of the first regular shows on YouTube. It's pretty good. It's 15 to 20 minutes a day. Pretty entertaining. Uh, and so they did an episode where they investigated shows with less than 10 views. And I was like, yes, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get gonna find us. Because they got like, I don't know, 5 million subscribers, something like that, you know, something crazy like that. And uh, I have to look up that number. So I'm like, yes. And they had like four. Ver- no, we didn't make the cut. We didn't even make that cut of all things. So we suck. I can't even, we can't win one way. We can't win being the worst or the best. You know, we're kind of well, in the middle. As I told Chris, I said, I think he alluded to that he listens, obviously. And I thanked him for it. And I said, you know, I, we don't know where this thing's going. This is just a chance for Woody and I to catch up after 34, 35 years and and have a conversation on Wednesday night. And if that's all it ever turns out to be, uh, suicide might be an option. Well, when, we but, get, uh, <laughs> when, we get, when we get older and our deathbed, our kids are going to put little you know, earphones on us and say, you can listen to you and Dave. Yeah. Uh, Tell us the story, Pops. It was so this good. is one way of recording a history, you know. Yeah, people pay big money for this, you know. That? Yeah, and and, if, and to get the video portion of it, so our kids and grand they'll go look, little Johnny, that's your grandpa, right? Exactly, you or your great grandpa, David. Theus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of which, I want to just reach out, say hey to the Sigmund Kai's of the world, because that probably is the majority of our listeners. I don't know, and the people of Saint Port Lucy. No, not Saint Port Lucy. Where do you live? Uh, Green Cove Springs. Green Middleburg. Springs. Middleburg. The Berg. The Berg is what the we people call in Middleburg. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm sure they're listening. They're all tuning in. Uh, we haven't done a listener update. We should do that sometime. Not tonight, though. All right. I got something else. You want to hear? So we do a well, listener email engagement. Pat Kelly. Patrick Kelly. He has weighed in. You want to read the email? Uh I I, I don't have it queued up because I was looking for something else at the it's time. Short but... and sweet. He basically took us up on the offer about having a guest appearance. And he said, okay, if you're going to, and then he said something snarky about 
Well, Dave mentions my name anyway, so I feel like I'm a co-host anyway. So yeah, he says, I mean, Dave mentions me almost every week, so it's almost like I'm a co-host already. Well, Patrick so. Kelly, there you are again. Yes. You're in. I, and I responded with, uh, let's do it. You know, uh, and maybe uh, maybe he's not listening just yet. Maybe he listens to this one afterwards. But we should try to really not remember things for that show and see how quick he is on the uptake. Yeah, and the microphone's hot. It's not as easy as you think it is. I do want to investigate his daily trip to the uh, post office. So, yeah, you want to ask him about that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to thinking maybe he's self-employed, and maybe that's how he gets. <laughs> oh, maybe it. maybe he's a mailman. Maybe he is the guy in the mailroom. Mm -hmm. That would make a lot of sense <laughs> if he went there every day. Not a bad gig. Or I don't, he's married, and he? he's married with kids. I would yeah. assume so. Yeah. I don't want to go there. Oh, we can ask him. Maybe there's a lot of action at the post office that we're not aware of. Yeah, maybe that's the hip place to go these days. Hey. Yeah, they put bars in. Anybody like your stamp? Do, you, do they have this down there? Do, do they have bars at the grocery store where you live? You mean like hand holds or? <laughs> <laughs> no, like a bar you could sit down at. Yeah, yeah. Publix has got a, they're, they're testing it. There's a new Publix that's got like a. What's wrong with you that you want to go to a grocery store to have a drink? Well, I remember when we were in college, there were these laundry mats that had like a car. Suds, suds and duds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because you're sitting around there doing nothing for two hours might as well have a drink i mean well, when i used to go i used to walk next door to a pub and have a drink so that make that makes well, sense it seems like a good place to pick up people they're there you know people got to get food i don't i hate the grocery store i all i want to do is get out of there as soon as i get in oh i love the grocery store really i, I like pub well we're Win dixie people now Win dickie when Dickie, that's right. The 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 formerly the beef people, soon to be, the Dugan. And uh, you either go to in Florida, you either go to Pubix or Win Dickie. Hey, easy on the Publix. It's where shopping is a pleasure. All right, we're getting sideways. We got to stay on this because I think we got a little uh, something going on when we actually do a little pre-show prep. All right, so we've covered uh, Patrick Kelly. Always a pleasure. Um, yeah, we'll reach out. Maybe uh, not next week, but maybe the following week. Mr. Kelly. So that yeah, would you'll, be you'll fourth, find it here. 10 17th. Yes. True, true friendship. All right. I got a couple things that they're tied to the FBLA trip. I don't want to hog the show though. So uh, yeah, it's a theme what, of this week's show, other than July 4th. Well, let's talk about that. What you, you're not at the why aren't you at the lake this weekend? Because uh my wife, the nurse, this is hit her holiday to work. Oh, uh, does she does she pick this one because there's extra bank involved or is she? No, she, they all are obliged to work a certain number of holidays a year. And uh, obviously you try to, uh, with her tenure at this location, you know, she gets to pick the lesser. Uh, Christmas. Yeah, she gets the yeah, Christmas, Thanksgiving and things. She'll take those up occasionally every four or five years. But uh, this year, just, I think she just has July 4th. So, and until two weeks ago, I didn't know I had Friday off. So, um, we normally would have, if she had known I had Friday off, she might've tried to switch or something like that. But so what, <laughs> what does that mean? You're taking, you, you work today, right? Or yes. Today? Yep. So you're off tomorrow and Friday. So what does that mean for you? Are you going to be like blotto for the rest of the week or? no no it is drinking night so any weekend night holiday or anything that they you know the windows open um no I, i've been trying to figure out what i'm gonna do there's stuff i need to get done around the house uh here in charlotte so i'll probably tend to the those items this weekend although the heat is just a turn off oh it's crazy it's horrible. It was mi last weekend. Uh, so my mom also has a place on the same lake in Tennessee. However, she just sold it and they're permanently moving to Florida. So we were up there. She, uh, of course, offered us uh, all sorts of stuff because they're not going to they've had two homes. They're not going to move. They're not going to combine stuff. They're just getting rid of everything. Right. So 
uh, we went up there and basically she lives about five miles from our house. And so we were over there loading up stuff. You know, she's like, take what you want other than, you know, family heirlooms and stuff are right, right. Uh, spread apart to different families. But as far as furniture and like my stepfather had a considerable amount of tools up there and he's just like, I'm done fixing stuff. So I'm tooling around. Yeah. So I loaded up a, a back of a pickup truck full of, full of tools. And I came back later and loaded up his tool chest. And so uh, I'm very grateful to him. I told him it was his, <laughs> it was his birthday. I told him it's your reverse birthday. I'm coming over here and taking stuff. So, yeah. Well. Cause they don't want anything. They're like, no, we don't want anything. We've got enough stuff. So, well, um, that's, that's a nice story because, um, I still harbor my tool story. My, my father's tools. I gotta be careful. They went to my son-in-law. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's okay. I don't, I don't do that stuff anymore at the, at the moment, but yeah, my, uh, my uncle, uh, inherited his father's tools and he has been slowly spreading them out to me and my brother. And I'm sure his daughters, uh, over the years, knowing that we actually use tools. So I have a number of tools out there that I know were my grandfather's and it does. It's, it, it's weird using them, right? You're like, well, this thing is 75 years old and my grandfather used this tool and it, and it still holds up today. So it is pretty cool. Well, the thing, and I'll, I don't want to get too far on this because it'll make me start crying, but now let's do that. He had, that. he had two toolboxes. One was what I called the metal box and the other one was the wood box. So yeah. you imagine, all the woodworking tools, the uh, awls and yeah, chisels or whatever. He and had then, nothing but awls. Yeah, that's all he of, had. A lot of punches, <laughs> <stuff. laughs> a lot of holes. He made a lot of holes. And this stuff. one makes a bigger hole, Dave. Look. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so you could open the toolbox, and the odor that was mm. in the toolbox would waft over you, and it, it was so bizarre when after he had passed. You know, we'd finally made it through the garage to get to that space, and I was opening toolboxes, and I was like, "Wow, what a, what a just rush of memories!" You know, I I have the same when I go to a racetrack. Most people don't like it. I love the smell of the racetrack. Yeah, it's something about it. It's just like, ah, oh, I belong here. You know, kind of thing. So and that's I, why I like cigars too. My dad smoked cigars, but there's a there's a history about it that I like. And it's part of tied up in that. So okay. anyway, um, pretty cool. All right. Well, that's good. That's a cool, memorable moment. Little segue there. But uh, we've been trying to get your FBLA story. Yeah, let's do this because I, so, I keep interrupting you. To the I, this is the FBLA portion of the story was perfect. Did, did I mess you up? No, I got to figure out our time. I just realized I didn't. Uh, we're, I'll make this short. I think we're up against. Uh, we, we started about five after, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, well right. I'll wrap this up pretty quickly. No, 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 no. So uh, we're over at the Regency. I can't Hyatt the, Regency. Hyatt Regency. Thank you. I'm going to write this down. Hyatt Regency in Orlando. And this is the one that was the formerly the Peabody. I don't want to get into too many of those stories, but it's got a special place in my heart, this hotel, because I've done a lot of business there over the years, and, and it's just good memories. Do you ever feed the ducks? Uh, I told you about the story about the ducks. We were going to get the ketchup packets and the down. Pillows. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. We uh, share that another day. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't do that though. But anyway, so apparently I have an affinity for killing ducks. So no <laughs> People so, are so worried about you. So I'm on this diet plan, uh, change health plan. I should call it not diet plan. And it's, it's called the Optavia five and one plan. So you eat five of their prepackaged kind of, uh, deals, and then you get a lean and green for dinner. You can have a lean and green for breakfast if you want, but it's basically four to six ounces of lean protein, you know, chicken or fish or whatever. And then it's some greens. And so what I've tried to do is the benefit to this thing was I could take all my food pre -pre -pre prepared packets and I put them in Ziploc bags by the day. And then I try to plan my lean and green like around dinner or maybe lunch. And so a couple of days, I told the kids, look, there's two kids I took down. I'll buy Friday night's dinner and I'll buy Sunday night's dinner. And so I I, I pay for one of my room nights, 250 bucks. 
and then we fundraise and then yeah. I make a commitment to spend another 250 bucks. So I'm, I'm $500 in, Yeah, you know, which is, we spent five days, five nights rather down there. So it's a hundred dollars a night to me. I don't care. It's, it's worth it. Um, so the long story short of this is I needed to find a restaurant where I could go have my lunch or dinner without the kids. And so there's two restaurants, the beeline diner, which is all the food is very good. First of all, I want to say that, but I have not been out and about with a lot of tourists mm. in a long time. And, and I don't purposely don't do that because I don't like them quite frankly. <laughs> and so <laughs> hence I, why I live in Florida. Well, I mean, I live in a place where I don't have to see them. And so um, I have this theory now, once you commoditize something where people can afford it or more people can take advantage of it, then it just cheapens it and you you get what you get. Like the Spirit Airlines, I'm sure you've seen the stories about people going crazy. It's a $49 flight. God knows who's flying the plane. Um, But this hotel is 250 bucks a night, so it's not theoretically it's not cheap but 250 bucks a night used to be a lot of money uh it still it, is it, it is a lot of money but i would think if i could f- i'm almost starting to understand why these exclusive resorts are the rich and famous are like you know get away from me i don't want to be around you because certain people shouldn't be allowed to travel is what i'm trying to say so so i'm down at this restaurant downstairs and i'm sitting at the bar and it, it is adjacent to the pool it's not the pool bar but it is adjacent to the pool and you there's some doors glass doors behind you know walking out toward the pool where people can obviously open the door walk out to the pool deck come back in and so my back is to those to those doors and i'm sitting there ordering my food and this attractive 40 something year old woman in kind of a bikini wrap you know she's got herself covered up she walks and sits right next to me at the bar and and you know, for a minute, I'm thinking, Hey, you know, I'm making some time here. Hey, now she says, yeah, she says, Hey, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing great. And and then the conversation kind of stalls. And I said, Hey, do you mind shutting the door behind you? And she's like, Oh, it's so beautiful outside. It's just so gorgeous outside. And I, and I said to her, yeah, I know, but I'm sitting inside. So do you mind? It's even the- more gorgeous inside because well, this hot, air yes. it's just humid hot air is right up your butt you know and so and then there's flies because it doesn't have one of those yeah the fans or, yeah and so she looks at me like i've got three heads and, and she goes are you serious i'm like yeah i, I i'm here to eat my food i'm choosing to eat inside where you're outside I sure we... way to not make friends dave well no so at this point we're past the she's cute and i want to talk to you to now she's annoying me and so <laughs> right. she she looks at me. What did she say? She said, uh, "It's so, ni- but it's so nice outside." I said, "I yeah, well, I'll go not- sit outside." <laughs> yeah, that's basically. I said, <laughs> "You go outside. I'll stay in here." And so she gets the ump and gets her drink or something. Turns around, just like you know, walks yeah. out. Yeah. So I follow behind her and pull the door shut. Well, I turn around. Three guys at the bar stand up. And give me an applause. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I'm like, are you kidding me? Are y'all winding me up? And they're like, we've been trying to get that door shut the whole time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, where were they when you were having a conversation with her? Well, one guy said he did it twice and, it, and it, they kept opening the door. Uh-oh. So then, so then I'm thinking, okay, wait a minute, Dave, there's two bartenders working the bar. These guys, they're probably making more money than I make at this. Price. Probably. Yeah. But but this is how they make their livelihood. And one of them's kind of looking at me like, yeah, don't be a jerk, buddy. You know, this is. And so then I said to the guy, I said, Hey, listen, tell me if I'm wrong, but is this a, is this a pool bar? And he goes, no, it isn't. And now he knows my name. He goes, no, it's not Mr. Theus. I said, but the door, this is how you're making your money. Right. He goes, well, yeah. I mean, we get a couple extra people buying drinks from us. I said, okay, look, I'm sorry. I, I, I've overstepped my bound. He goes, no, no, no. You're our guest and you've got to be comfortable. I said, let me just move to the other side of the bar. I'm going to make it easy for both of us. I'll, I'll all right. circle all the way around. I'll come to the side. That way I'm not going to be worried about it. If the door opens up because he, he goes, are you serious? I'm like, I, I stand corrected. So I, I was humble about it. You know, I was did like, you go okay. open the door? No, no. So, <laughs> so here's what walks in. So this speaks to the commodity thing. This guy's got to be 30 something years old. 
he's got a, a wife or a girlfriend, he says. You remember the signs in the in the windows, no shoes, no shirt, shirt. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Yeah. So it's not That's... a pool bar, but we're adjacent to the pool. So he comes in, no shoes, a pool wrapped around him, and no shirt. He had a pool wrapped around him? I mean, a, a towel. A pool I towel. know, I know. And so, I mean, he's not like gross. Not that I was interested in looking at him, but I mean, he's not like he's not <laughs> like me did. with my shirt off. <laughs> and so he's standing at the bar, and now I'm looking at him like, okay, the door's open again. Now you have no shirt on. And so he starts to order drinks. He says his wife wants sex on the beach. And so the bartender. He goes, that's like two hours away, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get on the B line, and so the there's tolls too. <laughs> there's no free lunch, and so the bartender sells him up. He upsells him and says, "No, we don't want you to. Do that. You got these really cool specialty um, cocktails. Let me make you a specialty cocktail. It's better than Sex on the Beach, and you know it's going to cost you twice as much." Right, right. And so the guy goes, "Okay, that sounds great." And so, but he goes, "But my wife said Sex on the Beach," and he goes, "I got you taken care of, buddy." And the and the guys. A professional, right? The bartender yeah. doesn't know what they're doing. They're going to take care of him. So I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm down. I'm watching this. And so he puts the drinks up. And now this guy's a talker. You know, he wants to start engaging conversation with other people at the bar. Now, I have to be very careful because I'm that guy. And I used to be that guy. But now that I'm 60, I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. Anymore. And so he's, you know how when you feel people looking at you? Yeah, you don't make eye contact. And, yeah. and, and they're like, come on. Play with me. I want to play with you at the bar. And so I look up at him and he says, this is, boy, this is some kind of drink I got going on here. This is beautiful. And I'm like, yeah. Is it your first one? And he, <laughs> nice. And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, nah, nothing. I, I remember my first beer. <laughs> I stopped myself. And then he's like, well, my wife said she wanted sex on the beach. I'm like, dude. And then I said, shut up, Dave. Don't say another word. So I'm, yeah. I'm fighting myself. So then the piece de resistance, ready for this? It's the five-star hotel. These guys put garnishes in their drinks, right? Uh -huh. So it's a dried piece of persimmon, I think, or or fig or something. I don't know. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's foo foo -y looking, right? Yeah, nothing you're going to eat, drink, or smell. No, but it's all for yeah. sure. It's, yeah. it's garnish. I mean, we yeah. can all agree with that. And so he goes, hey, listen, Mr. Bartender, before I leave out, because I know I'm going to get asked, but um, what is this? <laughs> and I look at the guy, I go, I think it's a garnish. He goes, what, what's a garnish? And I was like, okay, Dave, don't say another word. Please, Dave, don't say another <laughs> word. So now I've just put my head down and said, I'm not going to say another word. I look at Alejandro, my bartender, and I said, I'm so sorry, Alejandro. He goes, no, Mr. Dias, you're, you're doing great. And you're so, doing great. He's coaching you up. Yeah, so he goes over and goes, it's a garnish. It's a dried piece of fig or persimmon or whatever it was. And he goes, well, what is that? And I'm like, you should not be traveling. You should <laughs> stay at home wherever you came from. Go to the poolside and just leave everyone else alone. He just um, said, you know that weed that grows in your front yard? Yeah. <laughs> that's what that is. It's the same thing. <laughs> and they charge just six bucks for it. So I like it. So I don't know. I just. Weren't you a bartender at one point? Yeah, but a uh, shucking oysters and beer. Oh, okay. All right. So nothing like, but you bitch. know, the unfortunate thing is I, I've traveled quite a bit and I've been in that business professional, you know, and I, I'm not better than anybody else. Trust me. I know that it's just that, you know, I've been around a little bit. And so I've seen these things before and, and I guess you got to learn. I didn't know everything that when I first started, I didn't know what yeah. that stuff was. So you got to learn somewhere. And, and, and that's where I kept, I wanted to lay into the guy and then I wanted to realize that, okay, look, you know, it's okay, Dave. Don't get all upset. So I got one more story. So um wrap it up because it's uh window weep hole cleaning night. Okay, so here's the here's the fun one. So it, we're up and I'm on the 19th floor. My kids are just down the way. They're about six or seven rooms down. I'm on this side. My kids, I've I've given them the lay of the land. You're not screwing around. If I get one phone call or one call from some other advisor, this is gonna be hell to pay. Yes, yeah. so they understand the game that we play. And so I'm in the toilet in my room. The turlet bed in the turlet and the room next to me, I think it's the room next to me. You know, when you're in the hotel, you don't know if it's upstairs, the room over or whatever. And Mean noise. Yeah. Well, there's something going on. And so okay. it sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like they're beating some kid up, you know, is because the kid's like, Hey, cut it out. Stop it. Stop it. And then I'm thinking, <laughs> well, maybe, 
<laughs> or something else is going. <laughs> I'm picture, I'm picture. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking too, but I didn't want to. I was like, no, nah, we'll give him a couple minutes see if he gets done with. <laughs> oh, good. That's good for the kid. I'll give so, him a couple minutes see if he's. Well, I had to finish after. what I was doing. I wasn't going to break <laughs> camp right then, so so I'm really not motivated to go do anything. But it's I'm, good. You got priorities, I'm, Dave. But but then I've got a little conscious moment like what if this guy's in trouble? You know. Yeah. So I finish up my business. I kind of got my ear to the wall, not like doing this, but I'm I'm listening closely. And then it a lot of giggling happens. And it stops. So I'm like, okay, well, either they finished and or whatever. <laughs> so now it's midnight. And I think they're playing tag ball next door because they're they're on the bed and they're you know tag ball is only a game that me and you and a few others would know. Well, they're doing something. They're um, they're doing something that involves okay. slamming into the wall. Okay. Okay. So so now it's screaming, laughing, hilarity, boom into the yeah. wall. And so this is going on for I don't know five or six minutes now. Do you have like, the adjoining door? No, just that, the wall? in this hotel, they don't do that. This, this okay. is a pretty thick, isolated wall. So I've got some pretty good privacy, but it's hard enough where they're just banging in. Yes. It and yes. Carrying on. So I look at the clock. I said, okay, it's going to go. It'll, they'll stop for a couple more minutes and then it doesn't stop. And so and I don't even get it. This is how bad it is. I can't see without my glasses. I don't even reach for my glasses. I reach over, grab the phone and the new house phones there's no wires it's just you grab you get the hand piece and i i can't see anything but a light i push the button for the light it turns on the keypad and i fumble for zero and and the hotel's got ai that answers the phone oh so the they're desk like, perfect. hey good morning can I, can I help you and i'm like security and it's like are you in trouble no <laughs> hotel security and it's like do you need help and assistance do you need to dial 911 <laughs> hotel security and so finally the guy goes, Oh, you uh -huh. want security? I'll pass you to security. And so the guy answers the phone. And I said, look, you've got my room number, right? He goes, yes, sir. Mr. Theus, are you okay? I said, I'm fine, but you better get your ass up here because in a minute, if I get out of bed, it's not going to be so good for <laughs> these guys next to me. He goes, what's going on? Are you, are you in danger? I said, I'm not, not yet. <laughs> They're going to be in danger. <laughs> I said, so you get your ass up here and put this to rest, or I'm going to take care of it. He goes, oh, we've got someone on the way, Mr. Theus. Click. And I put the phone down. Five minutes later, do, 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 they're do, beating yeah. at the door. And so um, all these kids are all of a sudden, they're all hushing down, you know, getting quiet. And all this, you know, the security has been there. Well, no more, not a peep. In fact, I woke up the next morning. They were gone. The room was oh, in. Oh, maybe so, the security guard took them. Well, I'm hoping so. But I, my, my thought was if I'd gone over there and they were kids, so my my modus operandi is a little bit different. I wouldn't mess with the kids because you get yourself into trouble. Yeah, yeah. I would obviously. say, who's your advisor? Right. And then I would parade myself down the door and just beat the heck out of the advisor's door and say, listen, you know, I'm up at midnight. Maybe you should be too. And so that, that was going to be my approach. But nothing happened. We solved the problem. The security came and took care of it. But I, I guess I'm at my age now. What I'm trying to say is I've just, I have a shorter attention span for nonsense. It, had you gotten up and, and gone next door, they would have accused you of being an, an Eldridge man. Uh, Eldridge. I had to fit that in. Word of the week, folks. Last second. I went, to, I went to school with some Eldridges. The last name Eldridge. You know what Eldridge means? Well, Elder is a older, wiser man. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Ask the assistant before we wrap up tonight. Alexa, define Eldridge. In Germany, the name Eldridge means wise leader. In England, the name Eldridge means old slash wise ruler. That's not what I see. It's weird and sinister or ghostly. <laughs> How do you spell E L L D E R I D? No, e L D R I D C H. L Dritch. Oh. Alexa, define Eldritch. The adjective Eldritch is usually defined as eerie, weird, spooky. There you yeah, go. I was ready to pull it off. Now I knew I'm I'm smart enough to know what not to do. And so I wasn't going to, that's why I called security. 
No, I make sense. I wouldn't because I one I wouldn't have wanted to get a, uh, get out of bed and walk next door. For no, one, I, that well, was I a bridge know. too far for me at twelve it's like o'clock that, at night. It's like that Toby Keith song. I'm not as good as I once was, you know. Right. So I, I'm not going to get myself into a, into jeopardy. It's just a I, I don't have the patience. You know, I yeah. guess some people would have said, "Oh, it's okay, honey. They'll 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 wear out and they'll go to sleep." But I was just yeah, exhausted. Those, that age may never wear out. So you got to be careful with that. We'll have to explain. And I don't think it was called uh, tag ball. We had a, a name for our sport. Uh, someone remembers it. Do you not remember playing that at the uh, hotel in uh, Cocoa Beach? Tag ball or whatever it was called. Death ball. Death, death ball. ball. That's what it was. You didn't play death ball? Uh, there's something else we talked about doing at the beach <laughs> <laughs> on someone else's credit card, but I don't remember what that was. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't mine. No. Okay. Well, we'll have to talk about it, but tonight's window weep hole cleaning night in the Woody household. So, uh, oh, wait, we- window what? Weep hole cleaning. Is that like a wood single hung window? Weep hole? Is that no, what? no, 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 no. Yeah. So y- you have windows, do you not? Surely. All right. Well, rain gets hits the window, rolls down to the sill plate, right? Yeah. If you don't clean the weep holes at the bottom, the water fills up in the sill and then rolls into your house. You got to clean those weep holes, Dave. You're in you big like trouble. A, do you use a air injection plunge motion or do you have a, a wand that goes in yeah, there? Yeah, usually like a, a, a needle, but... Um, I'll have someone, well, especially for second story, well, even first story, I have someone on the ground look up, right, and see if they could see through the weep hole. Then we know it's plugged. And then others will hold the window open. Will I plug it? And the, the fifth person will either vacuum or blow it out. I don't want to come between you and your weep hole cleaning. cleaning. That's what we call it in this day and age, Dave. Especially with a few brews in you. Is that a good idea? Are you the guy on the ground? With the, Hopefully. With the yeah, that's the prime job to be on the ground. Or you want to be down there. Straws. Yeah. Now, I, I pretty much dictate the roles around here, Dave. I'll pick okay. what I want. All right, I hope so. All right. I feel like I hogged the show tonight, but I did cover everything I wanted to talk about. Well, I got to talk about weep holes. Can't be that bad. So, Mr. Kelly, the seven teeth, be prepared for it. Dave will send you a link, an email. With the yeah, uh, why you look confused? We should have a little pre-show first. Well, that's be fun. yeah. Are we, we going to put him on here too? Right? Yeah. yeah. So he asked the uh, that is where bag over his head. Mm, I feel. I think we should do that. Uh, well, maybe he doesn't have a camera. The unnamed fan. There you go. He might want to keep quiet. All right. Well, listen, happy July 4th. That's Independence yes. Day for the United these United States of America. Make sure you keep your digits. Yeah, don't don't let your kids play with fireworks. You do it instead. <laughs> you hold the Roman candles backwards. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Sure. All right. Well, uh, I'm Dave. I'm Woody. It's a glorious flag there. Old glory in the background. Gosh, she's beautiful. Let her wave. All right. You've listened to another episode, creepy episode, uh, Eldridge episode of We Can Help. And I'm not sure we helped anybody. But that's the way we do it because that's all we care about. Uh, join us next time for another episode. We Listen to us on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please, please tune in to uh, YouTube and subscribe because it costs you absolutely nothing. And the return on your investment is damn near close to that. So anyway... Yes. I hope that you have a great weekend. I hope you have a, a celebratory July 4th. And hey, like uh, RFK says, don't eat too many barbecued dogs this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs>